Today, we're going to be learning a little bit more about SCP-203, better known as Edward Scissorhands. Let's check this a out. A group of children on their bikes stare intently at the large, abandoned house. Rumors have been circulating all school year about a monster that lives inside. Don't go in. One child tells the don't. others about the kid from a couple towns over who just went inside and never came back out. Yes, yeah, so you like it's just... easy to believe that something don't evil go could in. be lurking inside the rundown home with its peeling paint and many broken windows. The children begin teasing each other, daring one another to go in and see the monster for themselves. No one seems especially eager to volunteer, though, as they all egg each other on. As the group of children joke about who should be forced to go inside, Another comes riding up behind them, struggling to catch his breath. Okay, this is basically just Stranger Things. That is a character straight out of Stranger Things. You left me behind again, <laughs> he complains. Clearly, this is not the first time that this smallest child of the group has been made to try and keep up with his bigger and faster friends. The bigger I don't like kids where this is going, guys. They don't need to discuss it any further. The answer to who must go inside <laughs> has already course. been decided. It's always the, the smallest smaller child one. tries to protest, but ultimately, what decision does he have but to go inside? He can't let everyone else think that he's a chicken. He's got to prove once and for all that he's just as tough as any of them. He's a Without big another chicken. Word, he lets his bike fall into the dirt and makes his way towards the big, creepy house. The door pushes open without any resistance, and the boy looks into the dark house. The boy steps inside, and the floorboards uh, creak loudly under his this feet. This is not going to go well. The inside well. looks much like the outside, old, worn, and abandoned. But then, he hears something. There was a, a few noise coming from SCP him. videos that started out just leave, like this. But he can see all of his friends through the doorway, and they motion for him to keep going. The boy mm -mm. steals his nerves Stop. and turns back. Just, just, just He's going leave. to show them just how brave he is. Find better the friends. The boy starts up the stairs, each one groaning as he steps onto it. He reaches the top of the stairs to find a landing with more rooms, each full of dirt and debris. There's spray paint on many of the walls and lots of trash. It looks like teens may use this as a place to hang out. I'm getting freaked out. But there at the out. other side of the landing is one more room, oh, and the door is shut. From outside, the group of children can see through the upper windows as the boy makes his way through the house. They're not laughing and teasing any longer. In fact, they're impressed by how bravely he is exploring the old home, though none of them would admit it out loud. He's earning their respect. The boy reaches the shut door at the end of the hall and presses his ear to it. Okay, you can leave now. Inside. I think you already he proved yourself to not be a chicken. And slowly opens it. Oh, God. The boy no, screams and no, falls backwards. What is it? What? Oh, it's just a cat. As the cat that was hiding inside panics and jumps okay. through one of the open windows. Okay, that's fine. The boy can't help but laugh. <laughs> just a cat. Of course cat. it was just a... The boy screams oh, again as the floor goodness. gives way beneath him. He crashes down onto the first floor in a pile of debris. Is he okay? He's stunned by the fall before starting oh to scream God. again as that floor gives way too. Is that part of the SCP? His yelling is silenced by the air being knocked out of him oh. as he hits the basement floor. He's covered in dust and pieces of two floors he fell through. Oh my gosh. He feels bruised and sore, but he can wiggle his fingers oh, and toes. Oh, that's good. He's not paralyzed. He could have been paralyzed. He doesn't feel like he's broken a bone. Well, uh, yeah, Maybe he kind of okay. made out okay. But huh? no, he's definitely not okay. Oh, what is it? Because suddenly... There's something picking him up off Ooh. the floor. As his eyes adjust oh to the dark God. basement, he sees what it is that's holding him. It's half oh man, my half machine, gosh. a huge, disgusting mix of metal and flesh. The boy is too scared to scream anymore as the creature's unmoving, dead-looking eyes to his. Its face looks as though the skin has been stretched across a human metallic yeah, skull. Yeah, I'd probably pee my pants. The boy can only watch as the monster raises oh. its sharp metallic Whoa. fingers and brushes oh. the dirt out of the boy's hair. Oh, it is nice. The boy starts to whimper. Are you but serious? whatever this thing is, it doesn't seem to want to hurt him. A huh. tinny, robotic voice coming from a small device on the creature's face suddenly breaks the silence. Al anta ala mayuram. What does that mean? The boy doesn't understand, but the robotic man tilts his horrific head to the side and repeats the same thing. Maybe he's asking him confused, if he's okay? But he feels like the robot is trying to tell him something. Huh. He somehow gets the sense that it's not going to hurt him. Is this the monster that everyone has been afraid of? A misunderstood machine man living down here in the basement? Whoa! The robot flinches as something is smashed on the back of his head. What is it? He tosses the boy to the side and turns to see the boy's friends, no. each of them armed with pieces of wood and other scraps as weapons. Oh my They've god, they're all gonna They've come here to save their die. friend from the monster that they dared you him got, to find. You guys are gonna Another die. runs up to that strike the so robot, stupid. but before why, he can reach him, he falls to his knees in pain, as do the rest of the children. The creature has begun emitting a high-frequency noise, and the children try to cover their ears. They all feel a searing oh pain that makes gosh. it feel as though their heads will explode. The piercing noise continues to ring out, this is so but the monster cursed. looks like it has entered some kind of dormant state what and is no heck? longer moving. 
The small boy is able to slowly get back to his knees, hands still clasped to the side of his head, oh, and stand no. up. He runs past the monster and his Dude, friends who are writhing so on the floor sad. in pain, up the stairs and out of the old house. A woman. They literally, it was a good SCP and they just threw a rock at it and provoked it. And obviously the SCP is going to defend itself, especially if it's as powerful as SCP-203. Because supposedly this thing has some crazy powers that we're going to learn a little bit about. But yeah, if I had to guess, this is probably going to be a Euclid class SCP because it still seems dangerous. It should probably definitely be contained. Um, but at the same time, it's not a Keter class. Like, it's not actively hurting people. Um, it's only hurting people if it's provoked, which probably means it's going to be a, a Euclid class SCP. But let's find out. Stands at a kitchen counter, chopping vegetables for their dinner that evening and talking to her oldest daughter about her plans for that weekend when the back door suddenly oh. bursts open. Oh, he's back Standing home. there is her son. I the really hope boy. he's okay. He's barely able to whisper the words, monster, there's a monster in the basement before he collapses, blood pouring from oh, his ears and no. nose, before he begins convulsing on the floor. At wow. the local police station, an officer is speaking on the phone. Oh, that stinks. I see. Yes, that is quite strange. A metal man? You don't say. I'll send someone out there right away. Don't go anywhere. The police officer hangs up the phone and looks around, making sure no one is nearby or listening to him, and then takes out a cell phone. He dials a number from memory, and someone answers on the other end almost immediately. Yes, this is Field Agent Patch, the police officer says. You need to get a containment team out here right away, and a good one too. I don't know what it is, but it's dangerous. Okay, good. So this guy the called SCP the SCP Foundation, Foundation Mobile Task Force that specializes in containing dangerous humanoid threats soon arrived at the house and took the anomaly into captivity. Oh. Misinformation teams concocted a cover story about a gas leak leading to the unfortunate deaths of several of the town's children and administering amnestics to any potential witnesses. So I guess they were able to uh, contain this SCP pretty easily because it seems like if you don't attack the SCP, it's kind of like, I don't know, neutral. Like it didn't really try to attack the SCP Foundation um, because they didn't throw rocks at it or they didn't do anything bad to the SCP. So as long as you kind of like leave it alone, it will do the same thing for you. So that's nice that, you know, nobody got hurt when they were trying to contain the SCP. Once the messy business of containment was over, though, it was time to figure out just what this strange creature was. SCP-203 appears to have at one time been a Caucasian human male. Though really? Its appearance now is far different. Than Dude, that guy, I did not realize how ripped this SCP was. Holy smokes. So, okay, I can see why people think that um, it kind of looks like Edward Scissorhands. I mean, he basically has, like, ginormous claws as his hands. They look like they could be like two or three feet long, like fingernail claws, kind of like a, like Wolverine claws almost. But gosh dang, dude. Okay, so his body is massive. It looks like he's been like ripped up a little bit. I don't know if that's like from his own claws maybe. And it also looks like his face, just bad things have happened to it. And it, 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 we kind of learned too that he's like half machine, half person, kind of like the Terminator. So I wonder if maybe he has some like robot powers like maybe laser vision or he's definitely got to be super durable because he's half made of metal and also too he is a massive massive creature so i could see why this thing would need to be contained because it could do some serious damage than it once was this bipedal humanoid creature stands 2.5 meters tall and weighs roughly 200 kilograms Wow. Both its incredible height and weight are due to the fact that the man's original skeleton has been entirely removed and replaced with a mechanical framework Whoa. made of cast iron. The metal skeleton is much larger than the original bones, and in many places SCP-203's skin has split from being stretched over it, revealing the mechanical structure underneath. I wonder if he could turn Other back to normal. Other parts of the framework appear to have been intentionally made to protrude through the skin, though it is unclear for what purpose. Huh. In addition to this larger-than-normal mechanical skeleton, a number of other augmentations are present on SCP-203. Its fingers have been extended into sharpened, hook-like barbs that yeah, are approximately you don't say. one meter long. What? Its lips have been removed entirely, making it clear that there is no movable jawbone and that the skull is likely one large hollow piece of metal, yeah. and there are several more hook-like protrusions jutting out around the mouth area, oh, that's smaller weird. but similar in appearance to the fingers. I wonder if it has to eat SCP any food. SCP-203's legs have been modified as well, with two added joints that give them an appearance more akin to a dog's, and hmm. its toes have been removed and replaced with a solid piece of metal, similar to those found in steel-toed boots. 
I wonder if they'll get into the origin of SCP-203. Like, did somebody do an experiment on this man, or did he, I don't know, like, cut himself on some iron that was infected, and then he turned into this, like, Terminator-like creature? I wonder, yeah, if, like, somebody made him, or if it kind of just happened naturally. Its chest has no sternum or breastplate, which causes the skin stretched across to pull inward as its diaphragm contracts. Its ears have also been removed, though it still seems to possess hearing that is far beyond that of an average human. And while its eyes still remain, they are held in a permanently forward-facing position by several needles that emerge from the eye sockets. The irises also appear permanently dilated and do not react to light. In place of a mouth is a small speaker covered by a metal grate that is capable of producing basic vocalizations, oh. though with a distinctly robotic sound to them. Tests have shown that SCP-203 has a basic understanding of English, but its own primary language seems to be a type of Arabic, ah. though there are no records of the exact dialect. Interesting. SCP-203 does not need to eat or drink, and without any visible mouth, it is likely incapable of either. Instead, it runs off of a power cell located within its oh, body dude, that will it's provide Iron energy Man. for up to 72 hours. Are you serious? After those three days, SCP-203 will shut down and enter a hibernation state so for three to four hours. How does it get more energy? which its power source will recharge, oh. providing it with another 72 hours of energy. Oh, wow. All attempts to examine huh. SCP-203 by either X-ray, CT, ultrasound, and other forms of diagnostic <laughs> imagery have failed and attempts at exploratory surgery have triggered its defense mechanisms. Interesting. Okay, it makes sense that the scans would fail because a lot of the scans use magnets to see the insides of, like, a you know, a, an actual body. So it's made of metal, so that would definitely, like, mess up the machines. I can see that being the case. and deadly. When it perceives that it is being threatened in some way, SCP-203 is capable of emitting a high-frequency droning sound that has a profoundly damaging effect on the human nervous system. Wow. The effects of this defense mechanism were able to be observed directly when a D-Class personnel accidentally struck SCP-203 and its droning sound was oh, wow. activated. Immediately after being exposed it to was the sound, D-104 experienced a severe headache. After 15 minutes, the headache grew worse, and D-104 began to bleed It's like when you run into a car ears. and the car alarm after starts going hour, off. The D-Class, who had now gone to the infirmary, began to experience seizures oh, wow. and was bleeding from all of his orifices. Huh. Ten minutes later, the D-Class was dead. So it just like melts Another your brain. Another test was performed, and the results were nearly identical, with symptoms progressing at roughly the same rate. However, this time, rather than move the D-Class to the infirmary, it was kept in the cell with oh, SCP-203. Yeah. After 40 minutes, the D-Class was dead, and a few minutes later, 203 finally ceased its droning sound. SCP-203. So that means that the SCP can sense when its victim has died. Which is kind of scary. Zero three then approached the body of the deceased oh. D class oh. and began to oh. use its own augmentations to start removing oh. the skeleton of the D class. Why? While SCP two zero three was stopped before it could complete its task, what? it now appears that the droning sound that produces is a defense mechanism, but may also be a part of the process by which it creates new instances of SCP two zero three. Oh, interesting. In interviews with SCP two zero three. It claims to have no memories of its life prior to its augmentation. Huh. It says that it now exists in a near constant state of pain and confusion, and that the times when its battery is expended and it enters a rest state are its only escape from the pain of its existence. It also claims that it has no memory of what happens once its defense mechanism is activated, oh, nor does so it remember sad. what it did to the body of the D-Class that was wow. left in its cell. So, like, there's a person trapped inside of this monster, and the monster can take over, and then this guy doesn't remember what happened. So it's, it's basically like Iron Man and the Incredible Hulk combined together into this beast of a SCP. However, it is unknown just how truthful SCP-203 is being. There has been no way to verify anything that SCP-203 tells researchers, and for the time being, its statements are to be regarded by Foundation staff as an attempt to elicit <laughs> sympathy or otherwise lies. manipulate them emotionally. <laughs> it's made several requests for pain-killing medication and anesthetics, well, that would be but nice. so far, all of these requests have been denied. Huh. SCP-203 has been classified as Euclid, and it is kept oh, in a I specialized storage it. bunker at a research site. Two D-Class personnel equipped with sound filtering equipment guard it at all times, and it is accompanied by an armed escort to any testing or research sessions. Is SCP-203 the ultimate victim? A normal human that was transformed against his will it into a crude be. amalgamation of man and machine? Maybe there is something more to SCP-203, or rather, less. Is SCP-203 fooling all of us? Is this tortured iron soul nothing we'll more know. than a metallic monster disguising itself with the skin of its last victim? Hmm. Perhaps with more research, we will one day know the answer. 
Now go and watch another. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that is the story of SCP-203. It, it honestly was such a sad story. If it's all true, but comment down below your thoughts, smash like while you're down there, and click right here to learn more about SCPs.